Mic, how it's hanging. Tomorrow, speaking of the whore coming closer to you, when a person is in Jannah, and he comes, he'll be lying down and he'll be thinking of a certain fruit. So sometimes it could be the trees that are in your garden, or sometimes it could be the tree that is in the other garden of yours. So it comes in the books of Tafsir, that at that moment, because normally man, whatever he gets in front, he wants the other. After you've proposed and you accepted and you married, then normally what happens? The man always says, I should have taken the younger sister. But he'll never say it loudly to his wife, otherwise he's out of the house. He land in a shop, whatever you order, after you order it, it comes. You'll always look at that other one and say, I should have taken that. In Jannah, normally that banana that's in front of you, you will never want it. So you will always think of another banana that's in that other one. So it comes in the books of Tafsir that that branch from that Jannah will reach out. So from far it will reach and as that man is looking, you will find that branch coming and then that banana just hanging in front. That's if he thought of a banana. And if he thought of a whore of the other garden, then he'll understand what's hanging. So that one meter, two meter story, yeah, he'll be coming for kilometers of the branch. Allah Tawarukta in the Quran has spoken about Quran. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا Quran. That we have made Qur'an very easy. For which some people get confused. That he said, I find certain Hafiz boys. If I had to choose who must become a Hafiz, I would have told, not this boy. That there are so many good boys, but this one is like the gangster of the town. But he did his gives the best. When he reads Qur'an, it's so beautiful. But his life is so terrible. So the people are getting confused that the Quran is a unique gift. And we have understood it, it's supposed to make the individual. But in the country today, Alhamdulillah, we are getting so many hufas. But unfortunately, some of them are not the best on the outside. Although their Quran is unique, their sabak is unique, their door is unique. But their inside is fraught, rotten. So the question comes that how did Quran manage to go to that person? So the answer is that if Quran had to judge like how me and you judge, and it would have said to a dirty person, I don't go, then we're all dirty in the end of the day. Then none of, none of us would be allowed to enter the masjid also. If an angel had to be say, I'll do a checkup. Then no one will walk in the masjid fajr time, no one will walk zuhr time. So the angels were told, open the doors. But we know many a time we do enter the masjid and we are dirty within. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, at least the minimum you can do, if your mouth got a stench, he said, at least clean your mouth. He would explain to the person, make wudu. He said, it's on a Friday and you worked hard in the felt, in the farms then don't come with a stench on your body. So a command was given that at least your outside sort it out. He said, don't come to the masjid. He said, because the angels, they take offense from a smell which man also takes offense. So the command was given that if your mouth is got a smell, rather clean your mouth and then come. But amazingly, the command was never given that if your heart is not clean, please don't come to the masjid. Because had that command been given, none of us would have been here. Long time an angel would have given one person one slap. All got dirty hearts. But then because it was coming so easily, and because Quran opened itself up so much, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِذِكْرِ Allah Tawarukta said, I made it easy for you. Take this Quran. Because that gift was made so easy, the person started thinking, that just because I never have to do anything for it to come to me, I don't have to do anything after also. So he just became a Hafiz of Quran. Thereafter he lived his life like normal. Had the Quran behaved like how we and you would behave, a woman who hears that her husband just wants to take another wife, that's halal, not haram. He's not falling into any haram. But then the way a woman says, you go to her, I'm out. In halal also, one will not be ready to share. Had Quran behaved like a Gujarati woman, the Quran would have left all of us long time. Never stay. 
One woman, her husband said to her, this is off the topic, but maybe he'll help you one day in life when you got a problem. We all have that problem. Every Gujarati man, he also wants a second wife. You know, so the Gujarati is like, no, no. So he wanted to marry a woman. So he came to his wife, he explained to his wife the need of the woman. In this issue, you can have the greatest bayan also, and the woman will shake their head like this. And then you'll say, can I practice? And she'll just say, less. Whatever you say is right, but not here. So in the ending, she refused. She told him, it's the door. I'll walk out. You take that woman, I'm gone. So finally, he had to explain to that woman that my wife is not ready. But that woman was not a woman just looking. She was looking for support. Maybe she had a family. She had children. Now she was already divorced or she was, her husband passed away. She had a hope. So this woman who said no, she writes the story or she says the story. She says, many years later, many years later, her husband passed away. Because one day your family will also pass away. She said, when her husband passed away, life was no longer the life of the past. Things changed. And she went to a great patch of difficulty. And during that difficulty, one glimmer of hope came. That someone said to her, there is a man who is interested in taking you as a wife. So she writes, from that day, it's like the sun rose in her life again. And she understood that she got somebody else walking into a house now during the day who she can look at to as a husband. You want someone to buy something from the shop, who are you going to ask? You want to go for a holiday but you got no husband, who's going to take you? So just the name husband was made her like her life started again. And then she said that thing just fell like bomb. Where she was told that her husband, the man who wants to marry her, however, he got another wife. A first wife. And that first wife is not taking it very well. So there was a lot of confusion in that house. And she says during that time, then she started thinking once upon a time. That I was also the one to say yes or no. So she said normally the ball must bounce back. The ball must bounce back. She says but amazing that second, meaning that man came after that and he said that my wife wants to meet you. So I don't know what dua she must have made the Hajju time that day. Because you're going into the lion's den. She said, when that woman saw me, she said, I don't know how she spoke. But in the end of the day, she held my hand and she said, it's very hard for me. But I'm going to be ready to share my husband with you. She said, it was that day I learned the meaning of sharing. This is the wrong place to give the bayan. I hope some woman is listening to this. That day I learned the meaning of sharing. It's very hard to share. But you see, when the time comes to share, normally we all say, I don't share my stuff. you got a smartphone also, you'll never share it. If one thing has shared is Quran, that is the only thing that comes to that Hafiz, and it knows at night also the Hafiz is not looking at Quran, he's looking at some other fault. But for some reason that Quran just makes sabr. Sometimes the Quran makes sabr for 11 months. Understanding when Ramadan comes, I think he'll become mine again. If there was no tarawih, even Ramadan would go. But what was that unique patience of Quran? That will say, I'll stay with you till the end. I'm not packing my bags and walking out. Sometimes you'll find the boy who knows his Quran better is the one who's worse. He'll even joke and say, me, I don't make door. I don't. And I just start reading, I just read. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ Allah Tawarukullah said, we made this Qur'an such that no matter how you are, the Qur'an said, I'll make sabr with you. But if you really want to value this Qur'an, it was not only to become a hafiz of the Qur'an. Because this Qur'an said, I'll come to you. I'll enter in your marriage. You share me with who you want to share me. I will make patience, sabr. So sometimes when a man has a wife like that, then sometimes you start taking her for granted. The value of Quran you will see the day you start shining Quran. The day you value it, you will see what is Quran. The power of Quran, me and you have not seen. Because the most we did for Quran is we woke up Fajr time, but we never want to wake up. We never traveled, we were pushed. 
We never woke up in the morning and my mother said, don't you dare go outside. We woke up and our mother saying, please go out. We came to class, our eyes, we were rubbing, we were tired. Sometimes we were making dua, I hope Moana, some family passes away today, we'll get one day off. That's how we came. We had someone keeping eye, Moana mustn't come. Now he's coming, everyone is sad. Our every day was a sad day. The day we graduated was a happy day. The marriage we made with Quran was a unique marriage. If a man had to ever tell his wife, you know, you, when you come in, I'm not happy. When you go out, I get happy. The day that wife hears that, she says, I'd rather leave. You don't want me, you don't want me. Amazing, Quran said, I'll stay. They understood all of us never wanted it. They were just there. The hiding was taking place. The sabak was being learned. If there was no hiding, every ustad, why? He says, you don't hit, they'll never learn. Imagine by force, your father-in-law is hitting you by force. He says, go to my daughter. <laughs> You'll never have an example of that. He says, you don't want to, just get out. By force we were hit and we were told, go to Quran. But Quran made that sabr also. It accepted to share us in a world where we took everything else. And Quran was one like portion. But those people who sacrificed for Quran, then they saw that Quran then became unique in their lives. It sorted out miracles in their life. And it seems we have now reached that phase. There was a time in South Africa where there was no hafiz of Quran. So it was understood to memorize Quran. That's like the main. Now alhamdulillah in every town you have hifz classes. People are memorizing Quran over the internet. People who you will not even think is a Muslim. He'll say I'm a hafiz of Quran. Can I read Tarawih this year? And he reads so beautiful. Quran is entered into houses, into rooms. The sister is competing with the brother. A lot of things are happening with Quran. But it shouldn't be we got stuck there. That was the beginning part which Allah Taala said, when you look for Quran, we'll open it up for you. Now it opened. But it wasn't supposed to get stuck. There was a thing to become now a companion of Quran. Sahibul Quran is a man who lives with his Quran now. The man who now starts living with his wife, he's married. Otherwise the other person will go in his house, he's not married. You will say, what a woman you got, but you haven't got her. She lives in the kitchen, you live in your office. At night when you come home, she's fast asleep, you fast asleep, finished. What life you got? One person complained to his friend that I got no married life. He said, I've been married for many years, but it's just there's no sparks. His friend was a marriage counselor. Everyone is a marriage counselor. Only he can't put his own marriage right. To give advice to the world, he got lot advice. So he asked him, how come? Like, why there's no sparks? Is your wife old? She's gone fat. She said, no, she's as attractive as anything. Problem is the world. We're so tight. He said, she works at one time. I'm working at another time. I come home, I'm tired. She comes home, she's tired. And two tired people land up before anything can happen. You can't light one cracker also, both are fast asleep. Where you'll find fireworks in a bedroom? So said, our life is less, it's passing. So his friend said, you'll have to take out time. And more than you, your wife needs time. He says, he said, Sam said to him, you don't understand, she works. After she works, when she comes home, you go to the bedroom waiting. But she has to clean the dishes, she has to watch, put the clothing right. She has to clean up the, downstairs. By the time she reaches up, either she falls asleep before she even enters the bedroom. Or you fast asleep. She said, what you do tomorrow, you come home early. Every night you're waiting for her, but she's not coming. So you come home a few hours earlier, and you finish up the kitchen job. You finish the clothing job. You get the thing ironed, you put it there where it's supposed to be put. You clean up here, you clean up there, you have that one plate of food. So that when your wife comes and everything is done, now she'll still have some strength for upstairs. So he told, what a point you mentioned. I never thought like this. That's where we were missing. So that day he came out early and he started. He did the kitchen, he did the bedroom, he did the lounge, he did the stairs, he did it all. So the next day his friend asked him, what happened? At least last night, I think a honeymoon should have started after many years. He said, I did as you told me, it was unique. He said, the only problem is, 
when she reached upstairs, I was fast asleep. <laughs> that world, <laughs> no marriage. You got a wife, but you got no life. Many of us got Quran, but we don't have Quran. We got Quran, but we don't have it. Everyone says, half is up, how are you? The only person who doesn't know he's a half is, is the person himself. He doesn't live with Quran, he doesn't read Quran. So the world will enjoy his Quran, but he himself can't enjoy it. He will stand on the musalla and start such beautiful Quran, others will cry, but it won't make him cry. And it can become so terrible that a boy can sometimes write, I am employed or I have been called for Tarawih in a certain town. And he will say, Moana, I don't know how to explain this. But if only the people of the town understand that in the month of Ramadan, during the day, I'm taking drugs. But the whole town is fasting, I'm not fasting. And he will write that during the day, I'm sometimes sleeping with other women also. While the whole town is fasting, I'm not fasting. But he says, at night, I'm the Imam on the Musallah. So the whole town benefited with his tarawi. One person never benefited was the boy himself. Why? Because when you're living with a wonderful woman, but you don't know the woman, a time will come where the people will say, he had a wonderful wife, but he was no husband. Me and you are like that. It should not happen, our eyes closed and we go in the grave, and the grave said, you had the Quran for 50 years, but you never knew you were married to Quran. You never benefited. So one woman, she asked this question after giving a long walkie of hers. And she asked the question to people like me and you. She said, those that got Quran on a plate, I can't understand how you will behave with Quran. So she explained her walkie that in the town of Tanabawan, Tanabawan is famous because of Murana Ashraf Ali Tanmi Rahimullah. So she says she was born in Tanabawan. And then she got married in a town called Panipat. And Panipat was known as a center of Quran. Many pious people, but many Hindus. She says the family she came from was staunch. But while she was there, she explains that a time came with some Panipat traders said to her son that why don't you stop worshipping idols? Do you really think the idol created this? She said her small son just looked at that man and he came home and he said, Mommy, I think we should accept Islam. She said for a child to say that to her was like her. She said for years she was thinking what I'm doing is not right. But when my son said to me, Mommy, accept Islam. So he said, I read Kalima with not anyone's Dawat, my son's Dawat. And on my Kalima, he read Kalima. So like a non-Muslim gave her Dawat. She said, me and my five children accepted Islam. So he says that the news then reached my in-laws, it was like Tiyama that took place. She says, the next thing I knew is they came and they explained and they spoke. And when I said to them that I'm happy with this religion, just leave us. We're not going to interfere. So she said, the next thing I knew is that they grabbed me and they tied me upside down. My leg was hanging perhaps with something from the ceiling. She said, I do not know where the shots hit on my body and who hit it. It seems either I went unconscious or I went into a deep sleep. But she says, for some reason I felt nothing of the idea. When she regained consciousness, she understood there were police around her. Because the police had landed, the people who were hitting ran. She said, someone who had witnessed the hiding said, you were hidden so much that your uncle and your brother-in-law, they broke their hands while they were hitting you. She said, but I never knew. She said, however, when I came out and I went to the hospital and I came out, my children were taken away. My son Usman, he was the one who started, he was 13 years old. She said, they hit him so much in the two days. Finally, he managed to run. He came to a friend's house in Tanabowan. Eight gangsters or ten gangsters came with knives. She said, I don't understand what happened in that battle. 
But those eight or ten people came to either take him or kill him. She says, whatever happened, somehow the knife went in the wrong direction. And one of those eight or ten died. For my son, a thirteen-year-old, to have killed a man was like something we can't believe. Just then a bus stopped, people started getting out, so the people ran. The police landed on the scene, they saw my son, he was also hit. And they saw another big man next to him with a knife in his body. Hindu police immediately took my boy. They would question him, they would interrogate him. She says, they tortured him for him to speak. So finally he said, the man was going to stab me. He said, I don't know what I did, but the knife turned somehow and he stabbed himself. They were not going to believe that, so they put him in jail. A 13 year old boy will sit in jail. She said, I was on the musalla crying. Four children are wherever they are, but my son is in prison. See, me and you, we never do all this way, Islam. Those that did it, they are shocked. At the ending, she's going to ask the question to me and you. That you never have to walk the road I walked. But I'm amazed that when Quran came to you so easily, how come you don't appreciate it like how I appreciate it? She said, I had to go for it. What a journey I had to make. You're not making the journey. She said, my son in the prison at the age of 13 would make wuzu and stand in salah. Me and you at the age of 30 won't do it also. After our first is just the finish like. In the present he would be reading salah and I would be on the musalla. He said I would cry. And he would cry. Since then he stayed in the present for a good couple of days. And then one night he sees in his dream that a veil is coming from the heavens. Behind the veil perhaps is a woman full veil and then he hears in the dream that the honored woman Fatima radiallahu anha has come fully veiled to come and say I have come to arrange for your release from prison I am ready to pay the bail and I will stand guarantee because they were not letting him come out on bail no one was giving the money he says within about 3-4 days a very wealthy woman of Agra for some reason she just came and she said, I will pay the bail for this boy and I will stand as his guarantee. She said, my son comes out of prison. She says, now with my son and it's me, but my other children are still not there. So she says, me and my son are walking and my in-laws pitched up. And I look around and there's no support. And they just surrounded us. He said, for them it was that they must kill us no matter what. Without talking, without asking, guns came out. She said, I cannot understand how many rounds of ammunition were fired. But for some reason the bullet never hit us. Amazingly, she said, one of those people got shot. How he got shot, I could never understand. He fell on the spot, he died. And we just ran. Bullets after bullets were coming. She said, living with my son, one day I was sitting in a lecture, I heard a bayan of Musa alayhi salam, that when he was put in the water by his mother, Almighty Allah said, we will bring him back to you no matter where he goes. He said, Musa alayhi salam reached Firaun and from Firaun he came back to the mother. She said, I went home and I said, oh Allah, if you could bring Musa alayhi salam back. Then I am also a believer like his mother, so why am I not coming back? She said, I had a dream that if you want your children back, okay, we're sending them back. So she says, within a few days, my son was walking one day and he just saw that his young brother and his three sisters are standing there. And he went and he asked, what you're doing? And they asked, we, we also don't know, we want to come home, we don't know where you are. I said, come, let's go. He said, how they came back, I cannot understand. But I knew last night I cried on the musalla saying, oh Allah, where's my children? The next night I was crying on the musalla saying, Oh Allah, I don't know how you brought my children back to me. So I just cried. Now my children came back. She said, my in-laws were adamant that they will find us and they will kill us. She said, about five to six times we came face to face. She said, we could see them but for some reason they never saw us. Almighty Allah protected. 
So my children would speak to me about the time when they were by my in-laws. They explained that on one occasion, they entered in the room and the daughter was found reading Salah. She said my daughter would always hide and perform a Salah. When the man saw her reading Salah, he became so upset, in our house you do this. So they took my daughter and from head to toe they covered her with paraffin. And then they left. But the thing never left. So they left, it never left. So they tried to burn her body and filled with paraffin. But the match refused to light. Just left her. He said, then they devised a plan that we will poison their food. So she said, they laced a milk tart with poison. And they presented it in front. Young boys eat immediately. She said, my sons ate, my daughter ate. They never knew it was poisoned. They said, later on, they're wondering why the people are looking at us like shocked. So he said, when they four ate and nothing happened, then he said, my brother-in-law's wife, she thought that most likely there was a mistake. This is not the tart that was poisoned. So she ate it. She died on the spot. There and there she fell. They made such a scene. That's when they understood the thing was full of poison. That was the two times they understood they tried to kill them. They must have been time after time. This woman says we lived in a miracle. Time and again Almighty Allah protected. We went through death again and again. She said in that manner my life passed. Now I'm with my children. Now I got a husband. She said, at that time in my life, after seeing so much of difficulty, and I put on the veil, I put on the parada, I said, as soon as I put on the veil, I started feeling a sense of feeling of honor. She says, always in my life when people looked at me, I understood that they're actually looking at my body and trying to take out my clothing. So when I put on the veil, it was a different world. She says, but I'm amazed at the woman of Panipat who grew up with Islam. They never have to go through bullets and through fire. They never have to be beaten from the top of a wall. She said, their children were not poisoned and tried to be killed. For them to put on the veil would have been a smile. She said, but I'm amazed for some reason they can't put on that veil. And then she brought this point. She said, now it's my desire to learn Quran. I must learn Quran, my daughter must learn Quran, two daughters and my children must learn Quran. So she says, every night, first she said that Allah has created me so close to the Musalla, that in the last six years she said, I have never missed Tahajjud, I have never missed Ishraq, I have never missed Chast, I have never missed Awabin. But then her sentence changed, she said, no I'm wrong. I can't say I never missed it. Rather I'm supposed to say in the last six years, Allah never allowed me to miss it. Jesus never allowed me. So I couldn't miss it. So said, now we want to go learn Quran. So we're moving to a place. So that's when she asked this question. She said, I just asked those people who got Quran, that how come I don't find you appreciating it so much like how I like it? I had to make a whole journey for it. For you it came like in the gift. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ Quran Allah Tawarqa said, I've given it. فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرَ Now will there be someone who will take the message of Quran? Or you just like take it. Quran is going to come to me and you. When Ramadan will come, the whole line will stand up. He's also Hafiz, he's also Hafiz, all Hafiz. Tarawi you will also read. You will learn one juice, you will learn ten juice, you will learn thirty juice. You will have a top jalsa. But when will Quran come in you? The one that you are supposed to make the effort for. The girl came into the marriage, but the boy must play his part also. Then something will happen. We are not playing our part. My brother Mara Imran, he sent one waqia for me. So I will mention this waqiyah. Before I would never mention where I got it from. But then one, two times my Imran told me on waqiyah, people ask later on, are you sure it's authentic? So now I say it's his story. <laughs> it's true, it's true, it's not true. So you have to compile a kitab of unique incidents. This is one of those incidents he mentioned. 
So this person who's writing, he explains why Islam entered their life. He says at a time when there was no cure for TB in India, he was diagnosed with tuberculosis. And his brother was one of the top doctors of the area, so he took him through the different. But the time came where his brother said that, you know what, I don't think there's hope anymore. So he said, rather stop dieting and stop medics and, and just go home and just pass the last few days of your life, but now we've got nothing to help you. So he says, in that state, while he's talking with his wife and he's speaking with her lovingly, so he says to her, you know what, my brother told me today, it's like time to pack up life. So he's a Hindu and she's a Hindu. So she says to him that, I can also try something on you, if you're ready to try. But you have to promise me, that if I can cure you, then whatever I say after that, you must be ready to play your part also. So it's husband and wife story. Normally whatever husband promises his wife also, the day everything gets sorted out, he forgets all his stories. Sometimes when you're on the verge of death, she said, you promise, she said, I promise, she said, you promise, I promise. She said, okay, no problem, every day I will come and sit by your bed, and I will read little bit, I will blow in water, you must only drink that water, no other water in the house. So he started, for him, when you got no option, you do any option. He said, I knew my wife from young, that family was a religious family, but her father was a top man of the BJ government. But she had studied the, whatever they call the Vidas, the book. So he said, I really thought she's reading from the Vedas and she blows in the water and she was giving me. He says, within a week I was able to stand up from the bed. And within two weeks I was now moving up and down in the house. Three weeks time I started going to my business again. Something like that. And four weeks time it was like, things are happening. So after a while my wife said to me, it seems that you are normal again. So you start going now for checkups. So she said, I went to one lab and every test was clear. She told me, you go to another lab, every test was clear. Now we were sitting, I asked her, I want to know, what is this medicine you used on me? So now she made me sit and she said that we made a promise, a deal. I did my part of the deal, it's your time. He said, anything I'm ready to do. So she said, I'm going to tell you to read something now. But you must not make an issue out of it. Read it because this is what gave you cure. And then she told him, I want you to read, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasul. He said, it was like a shock. So I said, what are you talking about? Do you know what this is? So she said, you made a deal with me. I want you to become a Muslim. So he said, I asked her, are you a Muslim you? So she just shook. He said, but your father, if he finds out, he'll kill you. So he said, you promised. He said, tell me about what you did, how you became. She said, a very long story, but you promised. You read this kalima. And she never stopped until he read the kalima. After the kalima, now she starts an incident. She said, when I was young in that village that we were, my best friend was a Muslim. I was in and out of her house. Her mother used to teach Quran. Her father was the imam of the masjid. Marana, Kalimullah Siddiqui Rahimullah in his book, where they published the examples of people who accepted Islam, this is one of them. She says, that woman said to me one day, you study the Vedas, so we and her started debating and arguing and talking. But the woman said that, how do you quote from the Vedas to me? You haven't read Quran. Let me teach you a little bit about Quran, translation of Quran, and then you can really ask questions. Otherwise, you can't ask. You just got your little knowledge of the Vedas. So he said, I said, no problem. To learn translation is no issue. So he said, over a few days, he started showing me meaning of Quran. He said, I became so addicted to this meaning that I said to her, that there is a certain passion in me that I don't like this translation, this Urdu. I want to read Arabic. Because as long as I don't read that Arabic, it's not enjoyable, it's just not fitting. There again, me and you, the tongue just went with Arabic. We never have to learn the English of Quran. It just came. So easy it came, that at that time, the Quran said, at least pay something for it. We say, no... Because it came so easy. That Quran asked for its price at the beginning, people would have given out kingdoms. That for you to come on my tongue is a big thing. But Quran just came. That girl said, I can't read this Urdu. I want the Arabic. 
So the mother said, no problem, the woman, I'll teach you the Arabic. You ready to learn? She said, I learned Arabic with translation. In one year with this woman, she said, I made a khatam of Quran. But I was not Muslim. After my khatam of Quran was made and I went through the translation of the entire Quran, I asked me and you, I went through translation of Quran because of the madrasa. Had the madrasa not been there three years, I would not have gone through it. And you also won't go through it. Why? Because our Quran came so easy to us that I thought it doesn't matter. The one who never got it easy before accepting Islam made a khatam of the entire Quran. They read the whole Quran in Arabic. They read the whole translation of the Quran. Me and you never. Maybe it's time we do start now. It's a journey we have to make. Quran did its job. It came to us in what a manner. From which era? 1400 years of effort of shaitan was made. Quran mustn't reach. Quran said, I'll reach you. It reached us in a land far from Arabia. When someone will see us, you ask, where you come from? Africa. They think still up till today people in the world think Africa got lions. Then you say south of Africa, the furthest, furthest, furthest. And then you read Quran and they get shocked. You know Quran. They come to the country, Lord know Quran. Say where Quran reached there, the answer is 1400 years. Quran has been going everywhere. It has reached jungles. Quran did its job, I'll come. I'll enter your house, I'll enter your room, I'll enter you wherever you are. I'll find you, I'll come on your tongue, I'll settle down in your mind, I'll take you to class in the morning. The miracle of the world, the father can't wake up for Fajr. But when that seven year old is enrolled for his class, father wakes up, mother wakes up, the whole house wakes up. Quran said, I pulled you out of your house, the garage was being opened. I went to the one town, they said, Alhamdulillah, his class started. They said, life has started in the town. They said, life starts at four, where the women have all become part of the security. Because four o'clock, you see all the garages opening. All the aunties are driving out. The father is still tired, he can't wake, but the aunties are coming, cars are moving in the town. Quran said, I pulled you out of the bed, I pulled your mother out of the bed, I pulled your father out. I pulled the ustad out also. The Ustad also wouldn't open his eyes for the Hajjud. Quran said, I made him wake up. You also go class. All that was done. Three years. Anything in the world you get hiding for one time. You stand up and look at the person and say, get lost. Even if your father nowadays hits you. You say, Daddy, I'm going out. Or sometimes the boy will say, Daddy, you get out. The miracle of Quran is, that that boy can get whacked in such manners and on such places. The day he completes his Quran, sometimes he'll joke about it. Hey, how Morana hit me? And you take a hadiyah and you give him also. Never in the world it'll happen like that. That you'll sit, no wife will sit with the husband and laugh. Say, I remember the time you punched me in the face. It'll never happen. But the student will say to his Ustad, I remember that time I was hiding in the toilet and how oh, you whacked me. Only Quran did that miracle of Quran. Quran said, I did all that for you. You think you became a Hafiz of Quran. Quran said, I made you Hafiz. One Nazar fell on that boy. He came class day in, day out, day in. Three years, four years, five years. The boy said, I'm graduating. Quran said, what are you graduating? One day if I had left you, you would not have come back to class. I pulled you day in, day out. Quran said, I did my job. But for the life of Quran to come now, you have to do your job now. You have to do it. I have to do it. So this girl says, I learned the whole Quran. And then that mother explained, the woman of the house, now you ask any objection you got with Quran. Tell me what you have seen in the Vedas. So he said, at that time I looked up at this woman and I said, Mother, she used to call her mother. She said, I just feel hard to tell you there's no life in this Vedas. I can't read it anymore. There's only life in Quran. She said, I'm ready to read Kalima. So the woman of the house said, you know who your father is. If he finds out, he will kill all of us. So you read Kalima, but you don't tell the world. And when you want to perform your salah, you come to my house and you perform your salah. 
To understand to hide your Islam one day, two days is no small matter. She hid it for years. Then the time came for her to get married. She comes to this woman and he says, we were always friends with your daughter. Because of which I could come in your house. That was my Islam, that was my life, that was my Quran. Now I'm going to enter into a house of a man who doesn't know anything about Quran. And he will take me to a village which is far from you. Now where will Quran ever come to me? Where will Salah ever come to me? So she says, this woman says that I will speak to your parents, that I want to sew some garments for you. About seven dresses. Normally a Hindu won't accept from a Muslim. But I will say to them that you are my daughter's best friend. You all went to school, you all went to varsity, you all did everything together. So I want to give a gift that you take to your marriage home. She said, I will make it like whatever you call today, kunsha, whatever it is. She gathered, she made that entire parcel. First she had to ask permission. The family was a little bit, they said, no, no problem, it's a good. But she wrote there that you see how I folded it. And the best of dresses, one after the other. And inside there's a parcel. But you can only get to the parcel if everything is opened up. So she parceled that whole thing with all the garments and she wrote that because this thing has been parceled so beautifully, it won't be fair that you'll open it in this house. This thing must be delivered like that to that village when all the gifts are being taken. And this girl will open it in front of her husband. And when she's opening it and showing it to him, he'll also have so much of like and happiness. So the parents said, what an idea. So she sent it. So the girl says that when it reached before my husband came in the room, I already knew, take out the parcel. So I showed him all the dresses, but that Quran stayed in my house. She said, when you would go to work, I would read my Quran. I want you to understand the sentence. Me and you, the whole day we can read Quran. We don't have to look for a time. That I get caught. Rather me and you, we look for the time that I get caught by my wife on that website. So when she's not there, then I quickly put it on. Then I know every delete function, whatever delete, delete your history, delete your life, delete whatever. I know it all, how to this one, this one, cut this, cut that. We will hide and read, but there's a difference between me and her. That we hide and read something else, but Quran is open. She would hide and read Quran. The journey that she is taking, me and you are not taking. That is why she grew as a woman of Quran, me and you are not becoming that woman. Say, I read Quran, but how many years, how many years, how many years she hid her Islam and she read her Quran until the husband became sick. Then also she never said anything. Then doctors all gave up. Then when he mentioned, at that time she took the chance. How many years of sabr? We don't have to make that summer. For me, I just come in the masjid, take a Quran, open up. Bismillah, start reading. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرَنَ الْقُرْآنِ And Allah Tawarukullah said, we made it so easy for you, Quran. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرَنَ الْقُرْآنِ For some, it wasn't so easy. How they found it. She says, when you became sick, I remembered my apa, my teacher had told me, there's one surah in Quran, Alam Nashrah. She said, she even told me, maybe one day this will help you. She said, the pious people of the town, or someone said to her, that if someone is sick, then you must read Alam Nashra in water. Blow in the water, and the man must only drink from that water. She said, when you told me you will do what you are ready, what I ask. So I remember that Alam Nashra, and I started reading in the water. And I was convinced that when my Allah said in Quran there is cure, there will be cure in my book. He said, now you are cured, now Islam. So he said, I have read Kalima, what a story, but how do we tell our families? He said, this time is not right. Then the man says, my father had put me up in business. So what that business, now I also never told him about my Islam, my Quran. From my wife I started learning Salah, learning Quran. Hidden in our own house now. He said, with that business, I opened up my own business slowly. I brought about my own business. After I was settled with my own business, we then said it. He said, in-laws and father, everywhere there was chaos. So then they sent the brother, the girl's brother, he had also studied the Vitas. They sent her to go and debate with her, speak to her. 
She says, my brother came, the man is narrating, my brother, you know, he came to my wife and he asked, he said, how could you believe in this religion? He said, you don't know that this Muslim people, they kill the, go- the, the cows. Because for the Hindu, cow is God. And if you kill someone's God, one God also, you kill his mother, it's a big thing, you kill his God. But here they're not killing one God, two God, three God, they're killing the God and they're eating the God. He said, they kill so many of our gods and they eat them. What kind of people they are? So she said to her brother, you know in the Vitas there's one incident. That there was a plague that spread once upon a time. And in that plague, one man told the people, the only way to get saved is that a hundred cows must be slaughtered. And the meat of those cows must be put in a certain area, jungle. And the beasts will come and eat from it and wild birds. And when they complete eating that meat, then the plague will lift from this town. She said, you read it in the Vita. She said, I read it. She said, how amazing it is that if 100 cows can be slaughtered for the beasts to eat, because of which the entire plague lifted from the land, she said, you should thank the Muslims daily, they slaughtering 100 cows and they're eating it. You don't need bees, they're doing the job for us. What if the bees could eat it and the whole plague left it? So he said he went quiet. Then he said to her, but the religion doesn't make sense. He said, because in their religion they got a well story. That if a rat falls in the well and dies, you must take out so many buckets of water. And if a chicken falls in so many buckets of water. And if the bigger animal cat falls in and dies, so many buckets, buckets, what's this buckets? So that if something dies in water, it's either the water is dirty or it's not dirty. If it's dirty, take out all the water. And if it's not dirty, what's 20 buckets, 30 buckets, 40 buckets? So she said to him, you are a doctor. You also know that there are certain times when a person becomes sick. And they understand that that blood of his is dirty. So the doctor says that we will do cupping, bloodletting. We will pull out blood. She says, but you also know when they pull out blood, they don't take out all his blood. They take out little but, and they understand the new blood that will come in will help to sort out their problem. So they just need to release little. He said, that well where you can't take out all the water, the law was given, take out what little amount so that new water can come in. And the new water will sort out the whole problem. She said, after two questions, then he went quiet. And she said, I started then asking him questions. Finally, when he left the house and he came home, then they asked, what happened? He said, you know, my sister never just accept Islam. She studied Islam. She said, rather don't go back there. What he meant is, you're going to go back, you'll also become Muslim. Just leave her. But what she explained in that waqiya was, she had to go look for her Quran. Her Quran had to come to her hidden. It had to be coming to her in her marriage house. She had to wait for her husband to leave the house. She had to take it out. Before coming back, she had to delete the files. She had to put it back in a cupboard. She loved years and years looking for the time to read Quran. For me and you, Quran waits years and years looking for the time when I will read Quran. Now it's time that we start making a new journey now. Quran did everything to come to us. Be a proper true husband now. You make that one step towards Quran. The man who becomes faithful to his wife, he sees paradise in the world. The man who becomes faithful to Quran becomes a man of Jannah. Wherever you walk, you will see Quran will do everything for you. It will make you a living miracle in this world. But you will have to get that connection with the smartphone or ugly phone, whatever phone it's called, which always dead. Battery never lasts. One of the things that the Sasmon did, it took away from a lot of people having a Quran in the pockets. I also like that you put the Quran on the phone, because it's easy. One is you don't need wudu according to some ulama. So me and you don't like to make wudu. Very hard. That Quran that was in the pocket would say, go make your wudu. As long as a man would love with wudu, he would be a unique, protected individual. Because I don't like, why I don't like to make wudu? Because my hair is so gelled. That if water has to fall in, perhaps it will be like a fountain then. It's coming on top. My shoes are so tight, I'm not normal anymore. 
My underwear is tight, my shoe is tight, everything is tight. One alim came, he said, you always such tight underwear that if a bird was put in that cage, it would have suffocated. He said, take it easy, be loose. <laughs> but we became so abnormal. <laughs> Change your sock. Take out the sock. Wear a normal sandal. My wuzu broke immediately, a quick wuzu. So easy, rap, finish, wuzu is done. But when I'm sitting and doing nothing, suddenly I got my Quran, I just open up the page. That man who takes a Quran in his pocket will see he can read three, four, five juz of Quran. It's like nothing. And if he doesn't have that Quran, then me and you all know, he can sit at night and read three to four hundred messages. He can answer, 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 and still he says, hey, there's a lot of messages I don't read also. He said, me, I can't read all my messages. I said, how many? He said, about two, three hundred, I go through, I get tired. That two, three hundred takes the entire night of his. And then he sleeps. Had he taken out fifteen minutes of that night and read one page of Quran, at night also he would have been in paradise. But the time has come that we make that journey. Let us be a faithful husband to our Quran now. Let's be faithful. May Allah subhanahu make me faithful, make you faithful. Quran came so far. It never even asked for mehr. We never paid anything. We celebrated when Quran came to us. We had the jalsa. Everyone gave us hadiyas. We never gave Quran anything. But nothing we gave Quran. So much we can at least do. That today say, oh Quran, I want to become faithful. I want to change. So much. Husband who is caught on pawn. The wife catches him. The beginning is he says to the wife, sorry, I want to change. So once he says, I want to change, even when he slips, his wife won't slap. She'll forgive. Because he said, I want to change. So when he falls, then the wife again will go on the musalla. Again she'll make dua. But what happened when he said to his wife, I want to change? If me and you can speak to Quran... And we can say to Quran, we want to change. Then Quran also speaks to Almighty Allah. Where that wife is making dua for her husband, that Allah change my husband now. Quran also speaks to Allah. He says, make this person now Allah. So let us say, we want to be faithful. May Allah tabarakullah make it that tonight we become a faithful man of Quran. We become sahibul Quran, connected with Quran. We live with Quran, we die with Quran, we get resurrected with Quran. May Allah make us all the most unique companions of Quran.